Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about 1 p.m. Eastern on Friday, May 26th. First, please know that at TonyTurner.com we know that freedom is not free. We honor all veterans who died while serving in our armed forces and thank all who are serving now. God bless. And to all of you who are out there, we wish you a wonderful, safe, and happy Memorial Day weekend. And now, on to the market. U.S. stocks are little changed so far today, following six straight days of gains, as investors take a breather ahead of a three-day holiday weekend. A strong batch of earnings reports from retailers drove the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ composite to a record close yesterday, Thursday, putting all three major indexes on track to post their strongest weekly gains since the end of April. Earlier today, a report showed that the U.S. economy grew at a 1.2% pace in the first quarter, slightly more than the 7.7, I should say, percent growth estimated earlier. The higher reading was in line with economists' expectations. And now let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, we're going to look, and we're going to look at a longer term chart today. When we look at our S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY, which follows our S&P 500 index, this is the ETF that follows the index, it's, it's a good, good idea, the stocks you're trading, the indexes you're looking at, to look at a longer term chart from time to time. Now this is a weekly chart where every candle represents a week's worth of trading. When I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $241.77. It made a new all-time high yesterday of $242.08. So, so far it's still within kissing distance of this all-time high. Now on this chart, I've I've plotted a 30-week simple moving average. And as you can see, this, this goes back to the year 2013, starts right, right there. And as you can see, this 30-week moving average works really well as a trend line uh, for the SPY. You can see where it's come up, and the SPY has touched it and then moved up, touched it and then moved up much of the time. Uh, it did fall a little bit in 2014 below it, but popped right up and used it for support again. Of course, we did have some drawdowns in 2015 and at the end of 2016, but then it popped higher and for the most part used this 30-week moving average as a pretty decent potential support line. Now, if we look at the hard right edge of the chart again, we see that the SPY is trading at quite a premium now currently to its 30-week moving average. Because if we look back at 2013, and if you even look at a chart before that, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see that, again, that the, the price usually just tracks right up that 30-week moving average. Only this year, uh, at the very, very end of 2016 and into 2017, did the SPY start trading above at, at a premium to its 30-day moving average? And that's where it is right now. So the questions in all of our minds, all of us who are traders and watch the market and investors too, is how long is this high momentum going to keep going? We, if we look down here for clues at the indicators, we're going to look down at this on the center scale here that we have a 14-week RSI plotted down here. And what we're looking at here, we're looking at the SPY making new all-time highs here, but this red line you see, this is the 14-week RSI. It popped up over its overbought range uh, back in March of this year, as you can see, March of this year, it popped over the 70 line. Now, 70 is considered to be overbought on the RSI scale. It popped above that when it was at these highs back here in March. Then the SPY pulled back a little bit and then started higher again. Now it's back at all-time highs. It made one yesterday, but please note with me 
that the RSI is making a lower high. Now when that happens, we call it a bearish divergence. When price continues higher, but the RSI makes lower highs, not higher highs like price is, we call that a bearish divergence. And many times this can mean that the RSI shows less enthusiasm than price does, and many times price will follow the RSI, the RSI's direction. Now this doesn't mean out that mean that we run out and sell all of our equities right away or all the positions that are in our account. What it does mean is that we might want to check out our protective stops on our current positions. What it does mean is that we might want to be careful when entering new positions, especially in momentum stocks that tend to fall uh, a little faster when there's a market drawdown. Maybe we want to use smaller share size than we normally do until we see if the SPY can break higher here and move up toward 245 or whether because it's trading at such a premium and price doesn't go up forever if it needs to come back and take a breather this summer. So all I'm asking you to do is maybe be a little cautious, maybe be a little careful, maybe check in with your protective stops so that you'll have a, uh, so that you'll have a good summer. Now let's go on to our next chart. We're going to look again, as we have been for the past three weeks, at the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, symbol IWM. As I've told you, this, this represents the small cap index, the Russell 2000 small cap index, which means its companies valued at $300 million to $2 billion in market capitalization. Now today when I captured this chart, the Russell 2000 was trading at $137.61. Now we know it made an all-time high on April 26th of $141.81, but since then the IWM has been just kind of sinking lower. Uh, it has speaking of enthusiasm, it doesn't have much. It did fall down here a couple of weeks ago when the market fell down. It rallied right back up, thank goodness for that. And now it's trading just at, just barely beneath the red line on this chart, which is the 20-day simple moving average, trading just white knuckling the 50-day moving average, the green line on this chart. Now we could notice here, we noticed a couple of weeks ago, that the 50-day moving average is now starting to move ever so slightly down. That means that price, again, is losing some of its giddy up when the moving average says, you know what? The average of price here is moving slowly down. So we have to see, uh, we're watching this, this support back here in March of $132.40. And if I could draw a straight line, it would come in right around there somewhere. We want to keep an eye on this 132-133 level and see if the IWM can maintain above this potential price support. If it can, it will be good. If it ha has to roll over and move below that and head toward the 200-day moving average, that could actually pressure uh, the broader market as the IWM many times will act as a leading indicator for the broader market. That means for the S&P 500. Um, so we want to keep an eye on the IWM. Now in the event that in the coming week it can rally up and head back toward a 140, Fantastic, then we can exhale. But we want to keep an eye on the IWM and see which direction it heads as, again, it can be a leading indicator for the broader market. Our final chart today is a chart of the Guggenheim Solar ETF, the TAN, uh, aptly, aptly named this, the symbol is. These, this is an ETF of international stocks that are obviously involved in solar production. Now the top components in this particular ETF are from US, Hong Kong, China, Norway, Germany, and, and other countries and include First Solar, Canadian Solar, Meyer Berger Technology, Atlantica Yield, and SunPower. Those are some of the names in it. Now if you were 
when I captured this chart today, it was trading at $18.45. If you were to look back at a chart that dated back to April of 2015, you would see that uh, TAN, or the solar ETF, is trading at a high of $50. Since then, for the most part, since way back in April of 2015, it's been in a really vicious downtrend. Actually, it's more or less been following the price of oil lower. Now, the good news is, since uh, in 2016, it started forming a base. And right around the beginning of 2017, as you can see, uh, it, it came down to below $17, down to a low of $16.45, actually. But subsequently from that, it's been making a series of higher lows. And you can see this, this, uh, this trend line I drew. Actually, we can also see it here forming a wedge. So if you look at this blue line that I drew uh, on the bottom and then the, uh, of, of, the, of the price action, and then the line overhead that has been coming down, now you can see that it's forming a wedge. And the TAN right now is above its 20-day moving average, above its 50-day moving average, and trying to get over the 200-day moving average. Uh, if it can get up above this 200-day moving average, and if it can close above it and continue higher, then I think it's possible that the TAN could move to $19 and higher. Now, if the market comes down next week, if the market starts to fall, of course, there's a, a possibility that the TAN could move back down toward its 50-day moving average. Uh, you know me by now. If, if price moves below its 50-day moving average, which is coming in here at about $17.60, at, at, at that time, I will no longer be interested in TAN. And if I am in it, I will probably sell it. However, if it can stay above this 50-day moving average on through the summer, uh, it may, uh, as long as it can stay above that and look positive, it may be something that we want to get into for a little bit of the longer term. Now, please know that this is not, uh, this is not a day trading vehicle. Uh, it doesn't have the volume for that. So if we get into this, we'd want to hold it for longer than a day or so. Okay, uh, now on to next week's economic reports. But first, please join us this coming Tuesday, because the market's closed on Monday, May 30th, for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We'll talk about which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. Tony's Market Club is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. If you can't attend the live session, no problem. The recording of our session is available to all of our members a few minutes after the session ends. For more information and to join, go to tonysmarketclub.com. For economic reports this coming week, as you all know, the market is closed on Monday for Memorial Day weekend. On Tuesday, the economic reports include PCE prices and the Consumer Confidence Index. On Wednesday, we have pending home sales and the Fed's beige book. On Thursday, we have the ADP employment change, auto and truck sales, jobless claims, and uh, oil inventories. And on Friday, we have the monthly jobs numbers with the unemployment rate that will be watched. Again, join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Tuesday. Don't miss out on this terrific opportunity to raise your trading skills and your trading profits. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.